Okay, so this is like, um, hello guys, this is like the last session. Uh, I hope, I believe that we can cover uh, as much as I expect us to cover today um, with the visualization. As you know that uh, in the past weeks, we have looked at uh, introduction to Power BI, we have looked at uh, connecting to data, we have looked at data modeling, and last week we looked at uh, DAX functions. So all of these things we are not, uh, you know, especially the, the the latest part. I mean, the DAX functions and all of that, they were just covered lightly, um, so as not to overwhelm us. Just to give us the foundations we need, elementary. And I always emphasize that uh, there's always room to learn more. Okay. So it just gives us the, um, you know, the walk around the tool. So today we'll be doing visualization and it will be the same. It will be simple. I'm not going to be doing complicated stuff. We are going to be using the DAX functions that we have uh, used in the past. If we are going to learn a new DAX function, it will be something that you would find quite easy to understand. And then we would look at how we can bring up our chart or we can arrange them and you know just as simple as as it's going to be um, so after that next week uh we will not be having this session next week and um it will be like a it, it will serve as a break for us okay because i promise at the beginning of this course that we are going to be having a project um so next week there will be a rest i expect that people joined uh halfway through the session or people who even who are even about to start, they can use next week to, you know, get back on track. And even those who have been there since the beginning of the session, they can, you know, try to improve for them what they've learned. And um, we'll be coming back in two weeks uh, for a fresh start for the project. So in that project, it will get a bit more advanced because we'll be definitely treating a new data set entirely. So I, I propose, I'm looking at two weeks for that, for the project. So um, once, as soon as I get the data to use, I will look at the uh, scope I would like to cover. Of course, when it comes to analysis, different people with different, uh, I think I already mentioned that before. People, you are, your audience determines a, num a number of things, what you like to bring up as insight also determines. So I'll just look at a very, um, extensive scope that will help us apply everything that we have learned so far, and then uh, we can do the project. So that's how it's going to be. I just want to um, call your attention to that. So next week, we'll not be having the session to be like a break for us to um, practice and you know uh, just get everything on track. So today we'll be doing visualization. And um, before I continue, I would like to ask if there is any question so far. I mean, the, if you have any question, perhaps on what we have um, we have learned together, or maybe you found something uh, on the web and you know you are finding your way around it. So, if there's anything like that, please kindly ask, unmute yourself, and ask your question. Any question? Uh, okay. So um, I, I myself will not be asking a lot of questions because I want us to cover as much as possible. Maybe at the end of the session, then I can you know, open the, the floor to ask questions again. So I will just go straight to the point um, today. Okay, so let me take off this. This is what we have last week. So um, as we know, we already brought this data. We are still continuing with the same data set we started with, which is the Adventure Works um, data set. Um, it was provided by Maven Analytics. And, uh, you know, we brought them in, did the modeling, um, just as we have here. And last week we did some DAX functions. Um, you could see some under customers. We, we use DAX function in creating calculated fields, calculated colon, um, calculated colon and measures. You know, I think we already covered all of this. So if you're watching this and you've not seen those videos, please um, try to check out those videos and then you will get um, on track with us. So today we'll be doing visualization, like I said, but before I start, I can't just go over to visualization and, you know, um, I feel the need, there's a need to have a kind of background understanding. 
So usually when you want to work on a data set, it's important to have an understanding of that data set, right? You need to understand what the data set is all about, um, who your audience are, and you know, with all this information, you are able to see the right insights to come up with. You know, so but it's I'm not going to be going too deep. When we are doing our project, we can do something like that. So this will just keep it as simple as possible. So usually, uh, what I do is um, when I'm working on a project and I have gone through my data set, I have an understanding of um, what the data set is all about and what have you. I try to document. Right, this is uh, best practice. I try to document everything. Um, I'm, I'm going to do what I would like to bring up as insight. And I will just show us a bit, bit of that documentation, OK? Um, but first, let us walk through this data once again. So this data, um, it's all about um, a, a warehouse, right? Uh, Adventure Works company. They deal in, uh, they deal in, in some hardware, um, like let's check some of their products, like bikes, you know, clothing, accessories, and all of that. So we have different tables um, in this data in this data set, and these yeah. tables are. Please, if you are just joining us, please mute yourself. All right. Perfect. Please mute yourself if I just join us. Thank you. So, and these tables are, um, we have the calendar table, which is all, all the dates. This is like a date table. This, we have the customers table. Um, this is like a database of all the customers that we have, right? So we already explained in the past, the type of tables. So please check out previous videos if um, you don't know what tables these are. Then we have the product categories. This gives us information about the categories of products that they sell. Um, these are the subcategories of the products that are being sold by AdventureWorks. And products, these are individual products with their attributes. By attributes, I mean the model, the description of the product, the color, the price, the cost price, the selling price, the length, and what have you. This was created uh, using the um, calculator column. So you will probably not find it if you are opening this uh, fresh. Then we have the returns. This returns talks about um, the goods that were returned, maybe as a result of an issue or something. So uh, we might not be working too much on this. So let me just skip. Then this is sales. This gives us information about the sales. That's the orders, right? So you can see that the order tables contain the date the order was made, the stock date, the order number, the product key. This identifies the product that was purchased. And it can be linked to the product table. By now, we should understand that. Same as the customer. So this is the customer key. This is the customer who is buying um, this product. And if you need more details about this customer, you know where to find them in the customer's table. So this has been linked when we did the modeling. Then we have the territory and so on and so forth. Then we have the territory table. So this gives us all of the territories. So um, since it's more like a marketing, there are different things that you can do with this data. So uh, we can come from the perspective that your audience is a sales team or the marketing team of that company and as a result what you'll be presenting as insights to them will be different from when you are presenting them to the board of directors so for the board of directors they might be more interested in um the profits the revenue that the company is making the revenues the profits and and what have you but for the sales team or the marketing team that are looking to scale up the uh, purchases, the number of purchases. They might be more interested in which territory is selling more, uh, which product is doing well, which, you know, what is the co customer demographics that is contributing uh, majorly to the revenue. So you can see two different audiences um, from the same data, but they are different. Can you please mute yourself? Okay, thank you. So you can see we have two different uh, um, audiences. Uh, we have different insight, but still the same data, right? So that's how it goes. So it's not a one-way thing. You can always come up with different um, insight. If I give an assignment on this data, I don't expect everyone to come up with the same answer. Then I know you all cheated. <laughs> you all probably you know, I went somewhere and uh, you did it together. So 
it's, it's always like that. So that's where the analytical part of the individual as an analyst comes to, to play. How you're able to drive insight from all of this. We will not be covering all of this now until we do our project, then we can you know, see some of these things. So I'm just uh, opening your mind to it. So um, now, having said that, I I'm going to look at this data now and say, okay, what do I want to do? This is just an example. So just something simple. So I can come to the customer's table now, for instance, and um, I can look at, uh, okay, let me come to the, um, let me come to the sales table. Since we are, let me assume we are more interested in sales, right? The sales information. So looking at these sales now, you can see that we have access to the products with the key. We have access to the customers with the key, and we have access to the territory as well. So you might be, you might be interested in knowing which product sells most which product is selling most or what are the top five products or the top 10 products that are being sold and you can look at this based on revenue that's the amount that they generate you can look at this based on profit of course profit is when you take oh, shit. can you please mute? I can. okay thank you so you can look at it based on revenue. That's the amount of sales that was, uh, uh, the, the, the amount, sum that was made. You can look at it based on profit. Of course, these are two different things. You can look at it based on the number of products that was sold. No problem, no problem. You can look at this based on the number of products that was sold. So different, you can do this differently. So, but they, they are all going to take similar steps. In, yeah, I'm talking about doing it over here. So you can come to customers and if you need more information on customers, you can look, okay. Um, usually, okay, let me let me start this way. Usually, um, I, I, the way I see, the way I tell people when I'm talking about visualization is you are most likely interested in comparing a categorical data with a quantitative data. That's basically what happens most of most times. So you're looking at a, 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 a categorical data. When I say categorical data, I mean data that are in, in, in simple terms that are not numbers, right? So you are looking at um, something like male, female, right? Boy, girl, you know, you're looking at single married, for instance. So these are like categorical data they are not they are not continuous they are not numbers and you look at numerical data that's of course the opposite numbers so most of the time you create comparison between them and that's how you're able to get your charts so for instance if i want to if on in on our uh, customer database i might be interested in knowing what is the number of males that we have compared to females you know what is the um that, that's one category go this is marital status i can be interested in knowing what is the number of married to singles i can be interested in knowing um and, and that was how we did this then when we were working on on this annual income when we started you know from this annual income we were able to get this colon for salary range so i explained then that we, it will be difficult to work with this because this is spread. I mean, the, the standard deviation here is very large. So it will be spread across. So, and that was why we had to create a grouping for it. If you have been following us, you probably remember when we created this salary range so that we can have. Uh, okay, I'm just seeing it. Sorry about that. I think they joined and okay. So so we can have um, a group for it. So now that we have the group, you can look at how many people in our customer database are earning, are having an annual income of being average or being high or being low. Now we have a category versus a number. Okay. So that's basically how it works. So let me just demonstrate that how we can come up with a chart. So now let's just the example that I said is still what we are going to work with. So we want to look at the number of customers that fall under these categories. Of course, the first thing we need to do is to create a DAX measure for that, right? So we're going to count, just do um, um, a DAX measure that counts all of the customers, okay? So I'm going to come over to customers um, and I'm do, doing new measure. Of course, we did all of this last, last in previous classes. So um 
just let me just do a little recap in case you are joining us for the first time. So if you want to create a measure in DAX, um, you just have to go to the table or wherever you want to create that measure. You just right click on it, okay? And you see new measure, okay? Please, I recommend that if you are joining us for the first time, no problem, you don't need to leave. You can still stay behind. Um, I'm sure you still get to pick up some things, but ensure to watch the previous sessions we had. Okay, please. Um, after this class, I would also ensure that they are posted on the group for us again, so we can catch up. So I'm going to click on new measure. And now I'm interested in saying, uh, you can call it any name, of course. So I want to say something like count of customers for readability, okay? Customers. So who can tell me? Can anyone in the chat tell me how we can, what, what will be the DAX function for this? Uh, what will be the function? Can anyone tell me? Who wants to try? Um, do I need to start calling names? <laughs> the question again, please. We want to count the number of the number of customers. We need a DAX to give us the number of customers we have in our database. I think we can use count a. Count a. Okay. So count A, this is like, I explained the count. So um, it, will, it will take time to be explaining this one after the other. So my apologies again, please watch the previous sessions, please. So count A means just count all, okay? So count, then what do we want to count? Of course, we can count um, the customer key because this is the colon that represents each customer, right? So you can just type customer, customer key. So by the time I just type customer key, you can see it, it's here. So you can either use your mouse to click on it, but I don't do that. I just use my um, tab to you know, select it. It saves me more time instead of having to pick up my mouse all the time. So then I click on what? Enter. So the moment you click on enter, of course, nothing is happening, but you can see it here that this measure has been added over here, okay? Then I can come over to my report view. Don't forget, so far so good, we've been working on, the mo we've worked on the model view, We've worked on the data view, and this is the first time we'll be working on the report view proper. Okay, so and this is where we have all our visuals for sure. So now uh, I want to look at. I always start with the table, just as uh, as we've seen in previous sessions, because it's more uh, visible for us to see what's going on before I choose the preferred chart that I want. So I'm going to start out with the table. You can see it here. I'm picking a table, and now. The first thing we want to do is we want to look at uh, the distribution of our customer based on this gender, right? We want to see uh, how much are males, how much are females, right? So I'm going to pick that gender, which is my categorical variable that I want to work with. So by the time I pick it, of course, you can see it here. You have um, female, you have male, you have NA. I will show you why we have NA now. And then the next thing is for me, to select that measure that we just created, okay? So of course, if I'm selecting that, just that measure that we created now, count of customers, you can see it's giving me the total number of customers that we have, which is 18,148, without any um, categorical variable selected. You know, it's just giving me the total. So, but now that we have this now, by the time I select that same count of customers, you can see that it's automatically calculating the number of female customers we have and the number of male customers we have and the number of NA. So I don't know what NA means. I don't know if NA is, is, is a gender, but I think the reason is because we have NA in the data set. Okay, so that's why we have NA. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Um, it's probably something we can correct uh, when we are doing our cleaning, but it's okay for now. So now that we have this, I can now choose. This is what I do. I mean, best practice, I put it up on a table first before I select the actual chart I would need. So this is not um, a chart class. Maybe we would still have an opportunity to tell us about charts because there are several mistakes about charts, right? So each chart, um, you know, the, each each type of data has the, the good chart you can use for it. So you don't you don't just use any chart for any type of data. Maybe we would uh, one of these days we we'll take a lesson on that, just chat. So, but for now, 
I, I know that we can use a pie chart to show this. So the next thing for me is just come over to pie chart and click on pie chart. Okay, so once I click on pie chart, you can see that this changes and boom, we have our very first chart looking horrible. <laughs> okay, so you can see this section is um, the male, you can see this section is the female is, um, and this one is NA. Again, you can probably use a bar chart if you want uh, or a colon chart. So we have all of them here, all the charts are here. So you can find the uh, batch, the colon chart here. So if I click on this, you can see, this is giving me, um, this is for male, this is for female, this is for any. You can see the flexibility. I think we have the same thing in Excel. Just select different charts and you can use like a tree map. You can see this is for male, this is for female, and somewhere tiny here um, is for, um, is for the NA. So I would just leave it as a pie chart or a donut chart, either one. I think I prefer a donut chart. So, so let's leave it there. We'll come back for the formatting, no worries. So I just want to show us another one. So that's the first thing. Look at what we did. We compared this category variable, this category colon, which is gender. I already explained what category means. And now versus the count. You get it? So let me look at. Okay, I have some questions here. Okay, someone said, is it similar to SQL? Like, yeah, it's similar. You know, these things are transferable. Yeah, it's similar. That's it. There is no count function. Yes, there is count function, but we have quite a number of them and they serve their purpose. So we have count A, we have count. Count is used for counting only numbers. It's only count numbers in that, uh, in that thing. So this colon, if it was not numbers, for instance, count will not work. So let's assume you want to count this name, for instance, it will not work. Just count will not work. So uh, in most cases, you get to use count A because it counts everything basically. So, but check one of our sessions, we, we discuss the different types of um, count. So the second question is, oh, donut chart. Yeah, so we used a donut chart. So these are um, the charts you can use. Thank you for your questions. So now the next thing we want to look at is, um, we want to look at marital status as well. Just the same thing, okay? Just the same thing, nothing is changing. This is a, another category variable. So we want to see the distribution of that quantitative variable, which is the count of the customers, right? We want to see how it is di distributed across those categories. That's basically what, come, what forms your chart. So we're gonna do the same thing. So come over here. Um, so I was gonna give you guys the chance to talk and contribute. Of course, we always do that. Just want us to be as fast as possible. So um, I can select my marital status here. You can see by default, it comes with a table. Okay, so I select my marital status and then the same thing, I select the count of customers. And you can see that 98, 9,817 of our customers are married, 8,311 are, are single, right? So um, looking at this kind of um, thing, I, I, I feel maybe we can improve it. So we don't want it to be displayed like this. So you can make it come up as maybe percentage, for instance. So instead of having it as numbers, so how do you do that? There are different ways to do this. Right, so whatever I show you now, trust me, there are different ways of doing them. So the, the more you work with these tools, the better you, be, you get. Either it's W, either it's uh, um, Power BI, whatever, okay? So you can come over here. Can you please mute yourself? Yeah, thank you. So you can come, now we brought them here. So I can come over here, look at me, look at my mouse. I'm coming over here to where we have the count of customers. So you can see this arrow there, right? So this gives you options. Can you see it? So you can see this option now, you can remove this field. Like I'm still gonna show you how you can remove later, but let me, this is not what I want to show you. So you can come to show value as. So when you see show value as, you can see you want percentage of grand total. So by doing that, you can see that instead of the numbers, they are coming as percentage, right? So um, this is the flexibility that comes with it. There are a lot of stuff that we can do. I'm not trying to overwhelm you. I'm not trying to scare you. Interesting stuff that you enjoy. So no pressure, we'll get there. So um, let, me leave the, let me leave it like this. And the same thing, I'm going to choose a chart. So I can just choose this. 
and try to just drag and you know just the way we increase if, uh, size and all of that they're not looking good we are still coming back there i just want us to cover as much as i can so let me look at another question okay so another thing so someone to tell me um give me a category that you think we can consider uh with this count with the count that we did looking at this table can anyone tell me the category or not any category that you think that we can check the distribution of our customers okay someone was saying username hmm. username where is username this well this would be tricky uh because you don't the username are likely distinct you understand so <laughs> you have a lot of stuff <laughs> so there you can see a lot of them and i expect the answer to be one 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 so but let's let's just see so since you already mentioned it so we can see for ourselves so if i select um username where is it username okay and you can see how long it is so you can see so but i just want to show you so if i select count of customers you can see that it's just one 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 because every customer has their own username so of course using a chart this definitely would not make any sense you can see how how weird it's looking like maybe it's looking like a yeah, nft <laughs> i'm just kidding okay so that would work so usually um your categories should not be too many right maybe five we're going to talk about uh, that when we do the um you know uh the picking of chat thing so okay another person suggested salary so yeah let's look at salary range yeah that's perfect so because i think that was just like i mentioned that was why we created this salary range in the first place so we can have um a, a a more organized distribution of our customers in terms of their annual income so we won't be looking at it because we cannot compare annual income which is in which is already a quantitative variable you cannot compare it with another quantitative variable you're only going to get maybe like a scatter plot and all of that and which doesn't show us what we need so yeah salary range so we can come over here select salary range you can see now just same thing we have just average high low and then you can pick your count of customers and you can see the distribution okay so usually the the best way is you know when you do stuff like this to look at the percentage it gives faster information so you can say for sure that um 36.4 percent of your customers are high salary earners right so um this you can i want to change the chart so i can use this this is uh, a bar chart right so oh I, I can just use this so just just do testing 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 microphone so one more and we'll go on um okay someone said sales where sales let me see where sales where sales where sales where sales i can't see sales here um uh, mr ladiji maybe you can tell us what what you mean by sale because i can't find anything like sale yet okay the second option is education attainment yeah that is in another one so we have a lot of them so you can always do that education level so you can look at what percentage of your customers are having a bachelor degree graduate degree and what have you same thing as occupation you can look at okay what percentage of your customers are professionals or are certified workers and you know what have you same thing as homeowners you can look at what percentage of your customers have a house yes or no you know this is what it means why or no so um these are stuff that um you can you can do uh with with this so any question guys before we continue any question any question can we continue oh, okay i believe so so um okay okay sure so now uh, that's customer so we are just looking at the tables that we can work on so we can come to products table right so this is also another one that we can we can work on so um these are all the products that we have um uh, in our database so um each product come with this key these are the attributes of the product this is the cost price of that product this is the um product price right so uh before we continue i would like us to create another colon um for profit because we definitely need it because of course when you are doing something that relates to sale 
one thing that will be of interest to you is the revenue, which can be gotten by summing up all of the uh, price. You know, the selling price, the sum of all the selling price will give you the revenue. But if you need the profit itself, is the difference in the selling price and the cost price. So I just want us to create a colon um, for profit, okay? So we can do it differently. You can use DAX function, you can create it, add it. We already talked about that. You can do everything in, in different ways. So, but what I want us to do right now um, is to, I, I prefer us to, um, let me see, let me see what we can do. I think we created it last week. Let me see in, inside our sales, uh, inside our product. Okay, we did not create anything like that. Okay, so we just have um, total cost. That's the only measure we created last week, which is the sum of everything we have here. So we're going to create another one for total price or total selling price. So it's still going to be the same thing. Just click on new measure. I believe we did all of this before. So that's why I'm kind of fast about it. So total price now, this is like the selling price. We cost sum of, uh, you're going to type that out, product price. So you can look for it. You can narrow down just, you know, so this is like total price. Now you can see it has been added here, a new measure. And the next thing uh, we can do is to look at uh, profit, okay? So, um, okay, let me skip that. Let me come over to sales, okay? So now under our sales, we can see we have information about the dates that these purchases were made. So you can see this is the date. This is, we don't really need this for now for this, for this class. So I will skip this. Now, this is the product. This is what connects uh, this table with the product that tells us which product are, are they buying, right? So, and the same thing as the customers, which customer is making this purchase, the same thing as territory. So now, if you are interested in knowing something like um, which product was actually sold the most, this is an interesting question which product was sold the most. So it's very easy. So all you need to do is what? Create, calculate the count of this product. Do you get it now? Calculate the count of this product. So I'm just gonna come over to, yeah. So just come over to sales, the same thing. Just click on new measure and you can say uh, number of products, let me see number of product up let me say product sold so it is product sold because we are under the sales table okay so if you go over to the product table to create this same measure you're not going to be getting the same output because for sure each of the products in the product table are only there once they are only appearing once so if you count you only be getting one 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 for everything but for this, in this case, it will not be the same, okay? So products um, sold equals to, so you can say count, you can use count A, count of the product key, product. Uh, you can say count of the product, what's the name of that column? Let me check it. Okay, count of product key, okay? In, you can see we have product key in, product, in products, we have product key in returns. So you have to be careful that selecting sales because that's what we need. Can you see now? Okay, so now we have this measure generated here. So we can go over um, to Power BI now and the same thing, just like we did on that customer's table, we can come over to uh, this sales table, right? And then we can click on we can come over to products now first. We we'll come over to products because we already modeled them. This is why the modeling is important. Okay, so the fact that we are interacting with the product key in the sales table does not limit us from doing so with the product key in product table. So the modeling is, is ensuring that they are well linked. So if I come over to select product key inside of our product table, you can see all the product keys that we have. Right, you can see each of them. These are the product keys that we have. So, and then I select, I go over to that new measure that we just created for sales. 
and I select product sold. So you can see that each product, I'm, I'm, the reason why I'm using key is because I want you to still understand it. I know it's looking a bit weird because it's like 2142099, no problem. I'm going to use the product name now. But because we, we counted key, that's why I don't want you to you know, start looking a bit like gibberish yet. So this is 214. You can see this product with key 214 was sold 299 times. Okay, which makes it, I think, the highest. So you can see this. Okay, it's not the highest. I don't know if it's the highest, except we kind of like order it. So, but you can see the count. So, if you want to improve this to make it more readable, instead of selecting the product key, you can select the product name. Okay, so I will not remove this. I will just select this, and it's going to be somewhere by the side. So, you can drag this, look at this product name, you can drag it probably here to begin this whole thing. So, let me drag it. So you can see it's appearing for. So you have the product name, this is the product key, and this is the product count of product sold. Okay. So now you can um, order this in as in in descending order. So if you click on this, just click on it once. It is now in descending order. If I click again, it will come in ascending order, right? So this this is one way that you can you know arrange your table. So now you can see that. What about to OZ was the most sold product, right? Based on what count. Now it was the most sold product. Okay, so um, that's how you have this. But of course, we have a lot of them here, so it's 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 not going to make sense having something like this in your report. So usually, when you have lots of stuff like this, the best option for you is to have something like top five. You know, you can have something like top five products sold. You know, top ten, depending on how um, how you want to do it. So, how do we go about that? So, I'll show you. So, um, first, we need to take out just the top five. So, you can you can create a DAX measure for that that will do all of this. But when you get a bit more advanced with your DAX, you'll be able to do that. So, for now, I will show you how you can do that with your uh, Power BI session. So, just follow me. So, now, if you look at this place, we have the fields. Can you see it, guys? We have the fields. No one is. Okay, not. so if you look at this part, you can see we have this field section. This is what shows off all and show us all the fields that we have. That's all the colons. Then we have the visualization tab. This is what shows us all the uh, visuals that you can apply. Then we have something here. I'm going to bring it out now. It's called the filter pane. Okay, so this filter pane, I'm going to show you how we, it, it, it really comes in handy, right? So um, I'm sorry I did not do a walkthrough of all of these things. I, I just feel it's going to take us a lot of time. So, but don't worry, you, these are all things you can catch up anytime. So this is the filter page. So we're going to be working here now. So by filter, you mean you want, you just need some, some part of the whole information, right? So you want to filter out something, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to filter this table now to the top, top five products, right? Top five products sold based on the count of the sales, right? So it is not top five based on maybe their name or top five based on popularity, no. It is top five based on the amount that were sold, okay? So that tells us that what we want to filter out the product name, right? want to filter how the names of the product based on the product sold, okay? So now this is how you're going to use it. So if you come over here now, you can drag your product name. Look at, okay, you already have your product name here, right? So once you click on it, just it's gonna expand. Now you can see you have filter type because this is a filter pane, of course, so it's expecting you to filter it, right? It's, it's, if you have to work here, then you definitely want to filter out something. So we have, you can see we have three types of filtering. So I'm going to demonstrate everything one after the other. So the first one is basic filtering. So this is pretty easy. So all he's saying is, okay, you can just select, okay, maybe I just want information for only all purpose bike. So I'm just going to select, you can see, I'm, I'm only having information for all purpose bike, right? This is pretty easy. So I want information for only chain, just very easy. Okay, we don't have, chain was not sold. I want information for only front breakers. Oh, I think the same thing, I don't know why they are not. Okay, for this, you can select, you can see, right? So, but that's not what we want. 
So the second one is um, advanced filtering. Okay, so this is used maybe when you you want to do something like okay, as you can see, it says shows item when the value contains contains what. So maybe you want to see when the item contains letter A, for instance. Okay, and if I click on apply, you can see that everything that I have here has A in them. Okay, let me make it more rigid. So let me say something like water contains water. If I click on apply, you can see the only thing I have here is the ones that contain water. So this is a bit more advanced type of filtering. But what we want to do is top N. Okay, so top N is what we want to do. So we want to look at the top five. So we're going to click five. By what? Top five by what? Is it by popularity? No. Is it by influence? No. By the product sold, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring that measure that I created, right? So I'm going to bring it inside of this place. So where is it? Let's look for it. That measure is a uh, product sold. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't see it, guys. Oh, yeah, it's under sales, right? So come over here to product. I'm going to drag it. Just drag it here. And the next thing is to, something is not right here. Okay, let me clear this filter. I think because of, I think the advanced filtering is still taking place. So, yeah. So let me just clear it. So you can clear your filter. You can see this place. You can see this um, stuff like eraser, clear filter. So just clear it so you can see everything is back to normal. So I can go over to top end now, top five, okay, by product sold, right? Then I click on apply and boom, you see. So you just have the top five product. This, this will really come in handy a lot. I can guarantee you that especially when you're working on marketing data or sales data, okay? So you can see the top five products based on what? Based on the product. So not based on profit, not based on revenue now, just based on the number of times that this product was purchased, right? So you can see um, that you have this. So you can now take this into a chart, right? So um, I don't want to convert this straight up into a chart. So I want to show you, sometimes you might, there's need for you to duplicate your chart. So I'm going to demonstrate that it's just what you know, which is control C. As soon as you select your chart, you can control C. I've never tried to use this copy before, but as you can see, you also have it there, but I don't track because so just control C and just click somewhere here and control V. So it's already on it. So you just have to drag it away. Okay. So in this one, I will just take off this product key. I'm just taking off this product key. So we just have the name and the product sold. So now I can choose a chart for it. So the best chart I recommend for something like top five is to use a stack bar. So it's usually visually appealing as you can see. So looking at this straight up, you can say for sure that this is like a ranking of the top five products that you have, okay? So that's, that's that. Um, I have a question. Okay, the, the previous recordings will be uploaded. I think the link was shared yesterday, but it will also be uploaded again after this session because I understand um, some of us might need to watch them again. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a bar chart, as you can see, a stack bar, uh, just that's the name. So I want to show us something else. So sometimes maybe not, maybe top five might not be enough. You might need something like top, top 20. Okay, and I said earlier that the categories uh, should not be more than when you are working with like a pie chart and all of that. So just let me let me let me just use this time to chip it in. Uh, there was a, a time I attended an interview, and the question I was asked was, um, I was shown a pie chart like the one I showed you earlier, the one that had a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> you remember? So that was the kind of chart I was shown, and the the interviewer was like, "What's wrong with this?" You know what's wrong with this and how can it be that improved? So I said the number of sections are too much, right? So because it typ typically a pie chart should not contain at, at most five. So whenever you see a pie chart with more than five segments, you know, then it's, it's, it becomes questionable, okay? So that's, that was the answer. And the recommendation was that what we can use, we can take out the top, you know, the top, um, I think it was about Twitter, Activity, yeah, that was what the, so I said that you can look at the top five or the bottom five, okay? Okay, so having said that, another thing is bottom, 
So if you come over here, you can see that just as we have top, we have bottom. So you can trigger bottom and boom, you have the bottom five. So just, just in case you have interest in that. So now when you have more than that, another alternative um, is to use something we call tree map. Okay, so let me just copy this again, Control C and Control V. Just want to have this here. Directly or indirectly, I'm just showing you what these charts mean and when you can best use them. Okay, that's what I'm just trying to go over them. So instead of top five, let's look at something like top 15. Okay, so this is still much. And if you take off the product key and you try to put this in a pie chart, you can see how it's looking messy. This is what I'm talking about. But that one, which I was asked in the interview, was even worse than this. But even this is not looking good because you cannot even see anything. Like it's not making any sense. So I think that was when you can use this tree map. Okay. So tree map, the way I see it or the way I define it is that it's 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 it caters for that um, number of sections that pie charts cannot contain, right? So it gives you the you know the ability to get, get more than just five and all of that. But it doesn't mean with tree map you're just gonna use hundred to know. But you know just something like 15, you know. So this is where you find a tree map. So when I change this to tree map, you can see how it looks like. So, so now this is more appealing to the eyes than the using pie chart for this. So you can see for sure that water bottle has a lot, followed by this, followed by this, blah, 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 like that, and to the end, okay? So yeah, oh, let me make it then. So click on apply, it's going to modify itself. So you can see something like this, I still didn't fit. So uh, that's that. So let me put it somewhere. Yeah. Any question, guys? If there's any question, please do ask. I don't think this class alone can be sufficient for this visualization. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, tree map. Oh, so someone said, what about tree map? Oh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, what about what about tree top? Tree map. I don't understand that question. Okay, maybe I answered the question already. I don't know. But if 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 I didn't, you can ask the question again. Okay, so um these are the charts um that we've seen. So another interesting thing that usually come in handy is um a card. Okay, if I can this is another thing that I'm sure that you likely use uh, almost every time. So card is just something to show text, right? So for instance, you are interested in the product that is doing well, the most, going by this same example that we consider, right? So you want to look at the product that is that that was sold most times. So guys, who can tell me how we can do that? Please unmute and tell me how we can do that. The product that was sold, that had the most sales, you know, talking about number now, who can tell me how we can do that? It's still an extract of what we've done, what we've just finished, so who can tell me? Anybody? Come on, guys. Is it is it that like we create maybe a dart for the maximum like number of uh, products so that then visualize it? Yeah, but yeah, that's exactly what we are going to do. But how do I get that? The first thing is okay. I need the product that is selling most. So how do I get it? Maybe we will go to the product table. Mm -hmm. After going to the product table, I think we we create a DAX uh, formula or a special. Oh, oh, okay, okay, I got you. I think we did that. Okay, let me let me make the question easier. So let's assume I have this, right? This is what gives me information of all the products sold, right? Let me clear this filter, right? So and I need the 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 that's I, I don't want to mention something, but I need the the first product, the highest. Product. Just only that product is what I want to see here. Maybe we use the the top, the top and mm -hmm. and what would what would be in the end? One, I guess. one, perfect. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. So yeah, that's it. So you're gonna choose top one. So just come over here to top one, okay? And by product sold, and there you go. So you have this. So. With card now, you can just click on the card. Oh, now you are having it as this number. So 
there has to be a way you can change it to um i usually fall for this oh my god all the time <laughs> okay um just give me just give me a moment i'm always falling for this um i want the product name i don't want the amount because you, you can see the moment i clicked on card i have this and this is not what i want i just want the product alone so what i'm going to do is this another option is click on card um my bad i'm all the time i'm always falling a victim of this okay so just bear with me let's, let's look at it together okay so let me just control z um i want the product name not the amount okay yeah card only accept one input so there has to be a way we, we need to tell it that we want the product name and not this okay so if you have an idea if you're on the chat and you have an idea we can do this of course it's welcome let me bring up this card and bring up this product name where is our product product name so we have just it's going to give us just the first one so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a filter of products so don't worry i'm going to show you what is going on oops it's still the same thing um hmm. all the time i'm always falling victim of this <laughs> okay 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 mm -hmm. okay what's going on now is I, I i want to show us just the product i don't need uh, can i say something yeah of course please go ahead I feel if we can, maybe you can use slicer, then use the card to like show the the top one. If it can if it can works like that, I will use the slicer. Yeah, and use it to show the top one on the card. Does it work like that? Uh, I don't understand what you're saying. Like you put the the products like mm -hmm. in slicer and use that to sort it. To like input in the card. Oh, that's that's. I, I don't. To be honest, I don't understand. Uh, what? Okay, you know what? Let's not. I would. I would. When we take a short break. Okay, let's take a short break now. And uh, I think I was looking at the time earlier. So let's take a short break. And if I tell we come back, I would. I will figure it out. Okay. All right. So we can take our break now. Just five minutes, and we'll be back for like the short second session. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys, so uh, let's quickly have um, um, half an hour more and we'll try to round this up. So, yeah, um, sorry about the last part. It's, <laughs> it's something that I, 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 I really get uh, really tricky sometimes. So um, I, I think from this table, it might be a bit difficult to, to come up with it directly. So, I mean, converting this table as it is now to a card it will only give you this part of the uh, whole thing so uh, alternatively what i would do is to bring in a card itself right bring in a card proper and then populate the names that's the product name of course because this card only accepts one value right so it's going to just give, you can see that by default it's giving us the first thing on the list which is of course um, all purpose because um, alphabetical order. If I change it to last, you see you have the last one. But this is not what we need. We actually need based on the product, right? Uh, product sold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in another product name to this field. Okay, let me tell you why we are doing that. So now if I click on this to filter, you can see um, it's not allowing us to come up with uh, the filters that we want, which is top end, basic filtering and all of that so we have to drag in another one okay so because this is kind of already filtered to first first uh, product name so there's nothing you can do about this again it's already filtered so you have to bring in the another product's name and this one you'll be able to filter okay so you want to filter to the top end which is the top one okay and by what by the product sold so if you bring over product sold here and you click on apply you can see that this will change to the uh to, to what we have okay so yeah that explains it so directly from 
a table to that, it will not work in for this kind of scenario. Yeah. Okay, I hope we got that. Did we get that? Did we get that? Is it clear? Yes, did. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. So that this is um, a card, this is how you, maybe you want to show um, uh, maybe the top products, you can, all of that, you can do this. So I just want us to look at two more examples and then we'll try to format these things that we've created, okay? So we just look at two more examples. So because we've been working on uh, the sales and the products table. So now let's extend it to the category table. Okay, so we have three categories now. We have bikes, components, clothing, and accessories. So we want to also look at the count based on these categories, right? So I'm just going to create a new sheet. This is how you create a new sheet, just as you have it in Excel. Oh, yeah. So create a new sheet and just the same thing. I will go over to categories table now, select the category name. You can see the categories and then go over to this measure which you created, which is product sold. And you can see that the distribution, it's right there for us to see, okay? And you can take this again to maybe a chart like this or like this as you as you want it. So I will leave this here. Then the other one is also subcategory, right? So if you come over to subcategory and um, you select product category, subcategory name. So once I select it, this is the key. This is the subcategory key. I want the name. Uh -huh. So this is the subcategory names. We have quite a number of them here. We have a lot of them. So um, let me just bring it here. I will not be minimizing. I'll just leave it like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then we're going to select this product sold. Okay, that's the same thing. Select so you can see that based on product sold, you have um, this information, right? So you can see. And when you look at the total number, you can see it's still corresponding. So this is how you know that your modeling is right. Okay, so just in case. So let me show you, before I go for that, let me show you why your modeling is important. Because as, as simple as all of this seem to be, the only reason is that simple is because the modeling was correct. The moment something is wrong with your modeling, trust me, something will be wrong with everything you're doing. So for instance, um, the connection between product and product subcategory. Let me try to just delete them. The moment I delete, if I go over to my chart, uh, you can see that something is wrong. Can you see it? There's an explanation for this, but it's, it's not something I, I, I plan to, to share with you as far as this course is concerned. But why I did that is just to emphasize why your modeling is key. No matter how visually appealing your charts are, if the modeling is wrong, Trust me, every other thing is wrong. Every other thing is wrong. So that modeling, please, for when you are, if you are just joining us, please see our modeling sessions and also learn um, from the resources on the net. But we did our best to just explain in simple terms how so you can understand it. Then when you are looking at the resources online, it becomes much more easier. So that's that. You can see uh, that. So uh, the first formatting I would like to start with will be with this table, okay? Because sometimes it's, you need to leave your charts as a table when you are considering, uh, when the information, the value itself, if it will be of uh, importance to the audience, then you, you can, can leave it as, as a table like this instead of a chart. So there are different reasons why you need to use this or that, okay? So, but that, we are not covering that yet. So I just want to show us how we can format, uh, uh, you know, our tables or our chart generally. So if you come over here, uh, to be honest with you, some months ago, this was not here, it was somewhere down here. Probably I just moved it somewhere at the top. So if you are watching this video now, and by the time you want to watch, I don't know, whoever is watching this video now, it might probably have been somewhere here. <laughs> so don't get confused by it. It's just always the same, but there are lots of updates uh, that probably I do on a monthly basis. So yeah, that's, that's it. So now uh, this is how you select your visuals. You already know that by now. Now, if you want to format your visual, this is the next pane. So you can see over and over it, you see format your visual. So you can see uh, different things and they are contextual. What I mean by contextual is, now look at it, I'm, I'm 
currently clicking on this table now, you can see the options I have, right? Now, if I click on this, you can see that we have different options. So it is contextual. The, you have, the, the options will come with the type of chart you are dealing with, okay? So there are a lot of things that you can, but as it gets uh, like improve on it is, is something you always work on. So let me just show you some simple stuff that you probably uh, might find handy. And uh, to be honest, it's looking, it's like in a while that I worked with this particular view. So bear with me while I try to find my way around it. <laughs> oh God. Um, okay, let me start with totals. So let's assume you want to turn off totals. So this total that you have here, let's say you just want to take it off. So you can take it off. That is that. Um, okay, so let's assume you want to apply the settings to a specific column. Right here, we have two columns. We have these um, subcategory, product category. So you can always maybe just select product category, you know, uh, apply to header, apply whatever. But to be honest, looking, let me just go to where I'm, I'm looking for conditional formatting. I think we have it in Excel, so most of us can relate to it. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh God. Okay. I don't know where this, this are. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know where probably I put this guys. So if there's anyone who have, because I've not used Power BI in, in like months, I'm, 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 I'm being sincere with you. I, I use other tools so, uh, for work and all of that. So if you know where the condition of formatting are, right now, because I can't find it, it's, it's a different layout. Um, hmm, interesting. But it should be somewhere here. Yeah. Star present, grid. Okay, let me just move on to another chat. I would probably figure that out again before we finish this session. So let me come over to this one. So um, if you come to this chat, so there are different uh, options. You can see it has changed. So first you can take off the Y axis or the X axis. This is very simple. Just toggle it in or out. Then you can also increase the font as you can see. This is the Y axis, okay, the values. So this is how you increase it or bold it and do all sorts. If you want it to be on the right, you can see. So these are pretty much easy stuff that you can do. And with the title as well. So you can see at the moment the title is on. If I toggle it off, you can see that this should go. Oh, okay. This the title for the uh for the axis. So this is the title category name. So most of the time I don't put it. Now, when we are doing charts, I will tell you why. Sometimes you probably don't need to put it, but if you need to turn it on or off, that's how you do it. For the X axis, again, you can turn it off. You can see that that part of it is gone. And um, if you turn it on, you can see it's back. Then you can also make the changes. Now to the values as well, you can show the values in thousands, if you want them in millions, like, you know, something like this 0 0.03 millions and what have you, depending on, on use case. So for the title itself, this is where you turn it on or off. That's the title for this. So if you have to turn it on or off, then for the grid lines, I'm sure most of us have been seeing these grid lines and they look a bit annoying. So um, you can always turn it on or off. So for this vertical line, you can just turn it off and you can see it's gone, okay? So for the bars, you can always change the color. This will come in handy for you because it's usually good for, um, okay, let me show you what I mean. So if I just change this now to this, you can see everything is changing. But if, if I want to change them individually, I need to toggle on this show all, and you can see that I have the option. So I can make my accessories to be this color. My bikes should be uh, like this color and you know something like this. I'm not so good with colors. so. Pardon me if this combination is really work. I can understand. So of course, you can increase the spacing as well um, for the bars. So depending on how you want it. Then the data labels, at the moment it is off. And what do we mean by data labels? These are like, that shows the values that each bars represent. So if I turn this on, um, you can see that they, they appear, right? So, 
and you can change the position. I want it to be outer end, so everything will come outside. I want it to be inner, inside, everything comes inside. So these are um, the options that uh, you have. Then of course, the background of this chart, you can change it. So if I turn it, if I turn it uh, on, now I need to just change the transparency to, so, okay, we are still working on the data labels and that's why it's just working for the data label. So, but that's how you, you do that. Mm. What else, what else? Okay, we did this, we did this. So let's look at plot area. So if, in case you want to add uh, an image, so you can always go to your, click on this part, add an image to your background. Uh, maybe you've seen some charts on the internet. You see people use all sorts of image and what have you. So for the title, this is where you turn off the title for the whole thing. And if you have to turn it on, you can also format it. You can give it uh, a, a, you know, a proper alignment, right? You can increase the font, increase the size. This is how you, you do that. Then for the background as well, you can also change the color. I usually like to change the background of my uh, headers. So let me just look for one. Um, sorry, I'm not good with colors. So, okay, I can change this text to white just to make it, yeah, something like this, okay? So, um, yeah, I think that does it. Two tips, well, I, will, I won't cover that now, so I don't want to go too uh, far with this guy. So you can see this is how you can uh, um, format. Let me, let me change this to, let me remove the X axis, the title. So I'm just gonna turn off the title, okay? Because it is it is well descriptive enough. So from the title, you can know what we are comparing. So we are looking at product sold by category. So you can also change that here, and yeah, it's it's your chart. So for this as well, let me see if I can get it now. Um, oh my goodness, values. Oh. It's really sad. <laughs> I apologize for that, honestly. Okay. So for this, let me come with this. So the same setting apply uh, for, for most of it. If you check, if you come to your visuals, you still have your visual, you have your general, right? So now you have legend. We didn't have legend under um, the bar chart, right? So here we have legend. And what are those legends? So these are legends, right? So if you want them on or off, you can always do that. Someone should move. Let me see. Okay, mood. So this is how you do that. So if you come here, you can see it's on. By the time I turn it off, it's gone, right? So I'm working on this, okay? Just so, let me see if I can change uh, the background so you can see what I'm working on, basically. Oh, it's not there. Oh my God, I don't know where they added all of these things. It is well, it is well Power BI. Okay, so legend on or off, if you have to use it, then you can you know, put it at the bottom or the left side or you know, uh, bottom, whatever. So, but usually the top right is usually like the uh, best place. So it's okay like that. Then if you have to change the text, you can always do that. Then the slice is same thing. So you can decide the color for the slice. So you want male to be, um, I don't know the color for guys, but I know for female, it is usually pink. I don't know if this is pink color. Um, I have a question. Okay, someone is showing me where the conditioner. So I will go back to you. Thank you so much. I will check it. So for the NA, you can use uh, you know something like this. Okay. So then for the um, labels, for the detailed labels, so you can decide. So at the moment, you can see that we have the value and also the percentage, and this is what is responsible for that. So let's assume we just need only the percentage. Then you can select only the percentage. Okay. So because that other one was looking a bit messy, like it's looking messy. So usually you can make use of just the data value or, you know, tells you, okay, this is 9K, this is 9K. Of course, it's approximated. So that's why it's the same thing. So I think I would prefer to use percentage of total. So you can see this is 50.29% and, and what have you. So um, you can check out all other stuff. This is rotation. Maybe you want it to whatever. These are just simple stuff you can always go around. Then again, the title. So this is one, at least one area of um, interest to me because it makes my visuals really look nice. So I'm very interested in changing the background to black and changing the text to something like white. It's more visible, putting it at the center, 
probably bolding it as well. Um, I usually do that a lot. So let me drag this so you can see uh, you have this. Um, what else can we do? Let me see. I think it's looking okay now. At least for now, it's looking okay. So the same thing here. So, but now sometimes when you have um, a lot of charts like that, so you can imagine what will happen when you have to start doing all of them one after the other. So sometimes you can use what we call the format painter. We also have it in Excel. So it's here, if in case you know it um, in Excel. So this is it over here. So what it does is you can copy the formatting of a chart and kind of like paste it in the new one. So let me show you how it works. So I'm just going to click on this now and I'm going to click on Format Painter. And then I you can see that instead of my arrow, I can have something like a painter. So the moment I click on it, you can see that it will accustom to the formatting that we did here. Okay, so that's one way to go about it. So instead of having to uh, do it one after the other. Okay, and of course with these lines, you can always align your chart properly. Okay, so the same thing, let me try it. So I'm just going to click on this, click on formatting. So, the, okay, so it's not so, because it's, they, are, they are not like, they are not the same, right? So you cannot have everything, but you can see like the title is now changed and all of that. So you just have to go and change the rest. Like these grid lines, I would like to remove these grid lines. So I'll come over here to grid lines, turn it off, the one for horizontal. Then I can, I'm interested in changing the title. It's not looking okay. So you can come over to generals, type two, and you can write what you want. So you can write something like count of um, count of uh, customers, or just say customers by customers by, or <laughs> just say annual. Okay, we are looking at income, right? So you can look at annual income distribution. So. Looking at it, distribution. So looking at it, no one needs to tell you that, okay, you are talking about you know, the distribution based on the number and all of that. So I can remove this X axis. So instead of having salary range again, you, well, you can leave it because not so I average low could mean anything, right? So you can still leave salary range, but this one, you can take it off. You can leave it, whatever you want to do. This is your choice. So I, I will just take that off. That's the Y axis. No, no, no. I just I just want to take off the Y axis title. So I'll come over here. I'm clicking on the Y axis and turn off the title. So you can see it's looking a bit down, normal. Then again, I can change the color of each of these bars. So by now you should know how to do that, but I'm, I'm not so interested, so I will leave that. So I can apply this same um, format, the one we have here for this. If I click on, oh, format. If I click on this and I click on Format Painter, and I come over here, I can, you know, you can see it has been formatted automatically without me having to do a lot of work. So yeah, you can select this format painter for this as well. You can see how everything is just changing fast. So kind of like reduce this one, right? So now uh, this as well, you can format this. So, so, you know, it's not working. So I think we have to go over ourselves. So we'll go to general, go to the title. We have to put in a title. It is empty. Well, th that formatting actually worked, but it's not showing because there's no title yet. So by the time we start typing title, you see that that formatting worked. So I can look at um, best selling product. You can see, right? So that's it. So best selling product, you can reduce, um, you can go to the visual itself and turn off this label. This label is like the first name. So you can turn it off. So you have something like this. Then the value itself, you can reduce it if you want so to something like 30. Then of course you can like resize this, right? Looking at something like this, okay? So um, that's that. And it's very dynamic. So let's assume I change this to two now, of course, to, to no longer be water bottle is now this so it's something dynamic. And if if it's like a data, like you're working for a company and their data keeps you know updating, once you refresh every of these changes that we've made, we take we take uh, place at the necessary place. Let me take off this x axis type too. Don't like how it's looking there. So maybe it's too big, whatever. But I just want to take it off. So. Um, it's not looking arranged, I know. So just a demonstration of everything. 
So let's go back to this. So let me go by what Alabi is saying. He said the conditional format is under the drop down menu in the values bar. Okay, so let's click on this and let's go to values. And where's the drop down? I can't find the drop down. Maybe if you can unmute yourself and, and, and tell us. Okay, uh, I don't think it's under formatting. I think it's under visualization. Displays? Yes, maybe when you click this, those values, maybe um, what you want to format. I just try to browse it. Ah, yes. they brought it here. Wow, you can imagine. Hmm. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So guys, as you can see, this is now where it is. You know, I told you that's, I mean, from the time I was learning Power BI and um, I was watching different videos, right? And it, it was looking different. And it, it, was even, it was even at a time when Power BI was really doing a lot of changes. So you just watch this month, you see this year and the next month is no longer there. And, you know, so that's, that, that's one thing that, that comes with it. But with the internet, you can always find wherever these things are and stay updated. We, we, I've not been using Power BI, just like I said. So it's maybe that's why I'm not so uh, into it. Uh, uh, if there's a Tableau fan here, well, it's not like I'm using Tableau, so you guys don't. <laughs> so, but I've not been using it of recent, so maybe that's why I did not follow up with that. But thank you so much for that. Okay, so now, um, we can go over to the conditional formatting. So what, what does conditional formatting do? I think we have it in Excel. So probably most of us are, have an experience with it, but if not, we're gonna see. So it's used to um, kind of format numbers now, right? So um, majorly in tables like this, okay? It kind of gives, uh, a, um, how will I put it? Clarity to a table. So rather than leaving your tables like this, just like this, you can add some kind of context to it that makes it more, readable and make it you know like a chart so it's more like a chart in a table something like that so if you come over to want to format this product sold right so i come over here to product sold i come over to conditional formatting so there are different types of we have background color we have font color we have data bars we have icons so i'm more interested in background color and data bars okay so i'm going to show you what each of them does so for the background color if i click on it now it brings this uh, for me. So what is saying, what, what's actually going on here is this. Okay, before I tell you what's going on, let me show you something. If I click on this subcategory name and I go to conditional formatting, you can see I don't have data bars. So again, it is contextual. Okay, it is contextual. So I just want you to know that. So if I come over to conditional formatting and I click bar background color. So what I want to do basically is, um, we want to kind of like rank our uh, values that we have. Then this color will help us, will show us. Okay, so maybe it's not clear. Let me show you what I mean. So from what you have here, you can see it says the lowest value is this color. Okay, and the highest value is this. Of course, you can always change it. Okay, but they shouldn't be the same thing. If they are, if they are the same, then there will be no sense in what we want to do. So if I click on OK now, you can see what's happening. So the 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 bigger the number the bigger the color, um, the, the, more, the more clear or the more solid the color is. So you can see this is 15970. You can see that it comes up with the, like the thickest blue and the, you know, like that. So if I change this to an order now, you can see it makes more sense this way. So you, looking at it, you can say this is the ranking of the subcategories, right? So I'm going to add product sold again to this, of course, I cannot click it again, so I just have to drag it over. So, so we have to. Then this, I'm going to change the conditional formatting to data bars. Okay. So if I click on data bars, it's similar. Just that um, this one um, comes with a bar. So I'm going to show you. You're going to see it now. So um, let's do from left to right. Let me just click. Okay. So now you can see. So you can see it's, it's more like a bar chart inside of your table. So it's not looking so well. So usually I like it without the numbers. I mean, we already have the, the bar. So why do we still have the numbers? So let me remove, if you come over here, you can see remove conditional formatting, remove the, uh, remove the data bars. So come over here again, 
remove the background color. Oof, I don't, this is a mess. <laughs> okay, let me just come over there, come over here to data bars again. Now I want show bar only. So I just want only the bars to be present. And if I click on this, you can see. Okay, maybe because they are the same, that's why we cannot, uh, they are actually taking shape like they are the same thing too. But that's basically how the bars work. So you can see with the bars, it kind of give you uh, how this is going to look like. So that's what I wanted to show you with conditional formatting. Uh, the other hand, um, they had this pack line, yeah, recently. So I don't know if it's going to make any sense here, but I, 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 I'm not. Spark line is like showing a trend. So if you want to look at maybe with the dates or something. So I don't want to show you that now. So uh, basically, this is how. Um, it's this is what it's all about. Take off this one. Sorry. Data bars. I want the numbers to show. Okay, something like so. Basically, this is what it's um all about. This is how you can select your chart. This is how you can you know format them. Uh, we did not really do a lot. There's still room for improvement for myself, for yourself. So it doesn't stop here. There are still a number of charts that we, we did not even talk about, but uh, you can't even know all the charts here. I mean, you can even still import much more charts if you want, but the, the idea behind this session is just to see how you can uh, use your DAX, just like you saw, we can use it to compute our measures and then use them in our charts. Um, um as well as formatting our chart okay laying out our chart so that was the essence of the whole thing so if you have to bump on any other video now on visualization for power bi i want to believe that knowing where the charts are knowing how to format them shouldn't be a problem and drag and drop them shouldn't be a problem okay so this is not this was not meant to be a comprehensive um session you understand so let me know if anyone has any question. Um, just in case you missed the announcement at the beginning of the session, we will not be having this next week. So we kind of like completed our module. We want we planned. This was what we planned. Um, this was our plan. So we, we did all of this. So today was the last day visualization. So I'll be leaving out next week for those who are just joining us to kind of like catch up and also those that have been with us to, to kind of like practice more, okay? Then in two weeks time, we'll be coming to do a project together, okay, as promised. So hopefully we're gonna spend maybe two weeks for the project. Uh, before that time, I would send the data on the Discord group so you can look at it, what we have discussed so far, just conceive some ideas, you understand? So conceive some ideas. Um, for some of us that are just starting, it might it's 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 very okay for us our portfolio project. So and it wouldn't make sense if I, I don't know I expect that you would want to post it on your social media and it wouldn't make sense if all of us are posting it. Right? It wouldn't make sense. So conceive your ideas based on the data. I will make sure to post the data that uh, the data set a few days before we meet. That's in two weeks' time. So you're going to conceive your idea, look at the data, try to bring it inside of your power bi it will even make more sense when you ask questions and of course i would show you how i'm going to solve it but you guys might even have a better solution for them you, have, you might have a better idea of of um, the type of visuals to use and um, what to consider the insight you want to generate from it okay so that's how we are going to do it so next week you relax you try to watch the previous videos please i recommend looking at other videos too on youtube i recommend guy in a tube uh, guy in a cube i recommend maven analytics it's not a paid advert these are just stuff that i that i use for myself so guy in a cube uh uh cobal cobal you have the uh, i would i would also try and send these resources um on the chat just to improve our the more you get exposed to these things, the better you become, to be honest, the better you become. So um, um, that's, I think that's all I wanted to show us today. So if you have any questions, please ask. Um, any questions, guys? 
Any question? No one has any question. Ah, really? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um my my question would be like, but I think I we have to do that. Like to know, like, okay, you know, when we are talking about categorical variables, you know, we have to use like something like maybe pie chart and um bar chart and I know if you want to use something like a trend, uh, maybe in terms of maybe our our data is in form of date or yeah, maybe mm -hmm. it, it, we use trend line or something. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, like sometimes I used to confuse those like visuals, like that's really like one of my like where I need to improve on in my power BI course to choose those visuals is sometimes conf it's really confusing to me. So maybe I will just yeah yeah you, you are very correct it's not just power bi it's all it's just visualization mistakes basically and i think i mentioned it earlier as well that uh i would try to find a, a time where we can just meet and discuss not only myself i would work with uh, all about the and bring other visualization experts you know identifying how you, how can you recognize the right chart to use and just like you said um date anything that has to do with dates maybe months maybe year the best type of chart you can use is a trend. That is either a line chart or an area chart. The reason I did not really cover dates because date is kind of like a tricky part of this. In this model that we had is is is, is because it's just tricky. Um, but we'll definitely be applying it in our project for sure. Okay, and you'll be seeing it. So um, again, I recommend if you can just check some resources online that talks about visualization mistakes. A lot of people have been raising awareness about it on LinkedIn and all of that. So if I find resources that will help, trust me, I will always drop them on the chat in, in, in due time as soon as I find anything useful. But yeah, I like that you know that each chart come with uh, the type of data, right? So you cannot just use any type of chart for any type of data, right? So you have to understand the data you're addressing and the right chart to use. Okay, so it's a learning process for everyone, including myself. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question, guys? Mm, I hope I'm not missing out on any information. Okay, if there is, I will just post on the group. So thank you so much, guys, for today's session and your contribution. I really enjoyed myself and I learned something again, thanks to Power BI moving things up and down. <laughs> so yeah, we'll catch up in two weeks. And if you have any questions, please ask me directly DM on Discord or just post on the uh, general chat and um, put in some work, right? Put in some work, check resources online, uh, work on them. If you are just starting your analytics career, I recommend you to use your social media a lot. Um, no matter how simple, I mean, you can, this that we did today, if you are following, I mean, if you are able to do, even the way it's looking, it's not looking well, right? But if you can just like get a, a, a snapshot of this and just post it on your page that, oh, today's session was was great. I was able to learn this. It's it's a process. They see that someone is putting in the work, right? So it's, it's something that a lot of people have talked about and it has worked for them. So it's, you don't have to wait till you become a like an expert, you know. You'll be surprised that even in some of the organizations, you probably even know it better than some of them. I'm, I'm very serious with you. So don't limit yourself. Learn, check resources online, and try to use social media as much as you can. So thank you so much, guys, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.